News Talk K57's Phil Leon Guerrero worked at the governor's office at Adaloop for several years. For all the years that I worked at Adaloop, I always was cautioned about, you know, strange things going on. Leon Guerrero never experienced anything himself, but he did hear numerous stories. And it can go from, you know, women not liking to use the bathroom late at night because they hear some strange noises, uh, people seeing kids in their side view mirror in their cars and when they turn around there's nothing there, feeling of a presence, uh, seeing things out of the corner of your eye that disappear, someone feeling like a, a tap on their shoulder and then turning around and there was no one there in the bathroom with them. Adaloupe has a long history. It was a leper colony built by the Spanish in the mid-1800s. In the 1950s, it was a public school, and later, Governor Ricky Berdalio turned it into the governor's complex. We got to Adaloupe and met with governor's office employee, Andrew Cruz. Have you experienced anything here? Um, when I'm here alone during the dark, it's kind of, it's not that I experience anything, it's just eerie. It's something I don't want to be by myself for. Okay, all right. Well, let's go check it out then. And with that, and with that, we all headed, we all into, headed the into the gates of Adaloo, of Adaloo and walked, and up, walked the hill, up the hill into the Governor into the Ricardo, Ricardo J. Bardalio's Bardalio's Governor's, Governor's, Complex. Governor's, Complex. Governor's Complex. I must admit, I must admit, at night, at night, the complex, the complex is, a bit spooky. is a bit spooky. We decided to investigate the restroom first. There have been stories of faucets turning on and off by themselves and apparitions of a little girl. That was open five minutes ago, and it stays open unless someone closes it. So unless someone closes it, it's gonna remain locked. So five minutes ago when, you, when we first got here, the men's yeah. room was open. Yeah, when well, it was just like me, I was... We decided to take some readings around the now closed and locked restroom door. Is there anybody holding this door or doesn't want us to come in there? Temperature is dropping. Oh. It was at 89, it's at 85. Okay. Paranormal investigators believe temperature drops are signs the spirits are drawing energy from the heat in the air in order to manifest. Why won't you let us in? What? What? The voice from the spirit box sounds like it could have said one of two things, either I am kept safe or I have kept faith. Shortly after, the temperature began to rise back to normal levels, and there were no more abnormal readings. So we decided to move on and split our group into two, one to investigate the communications department office, and the other to investigate the site of the World War II cannon and Japanese shrine. But right before we split up, Jolene mentioned that she wasn't feeling well. So my knee starts hurting, and um, part of my back is starting to hurt too. And earlier when we were walking in, my stomach was hurting. So my stomach is no longer hurting, but my joints are hurting. So I don't know what that, that is. Perhaps an omen of what was to come. I went into the communications office with Andrew Cruz to do some EVP recordings or electronic voice phenomena. If there's a spirit in here, can you tell us your name? We're not here to cause any harm or any trouble or anything. We just want to know more about you. I sat in the dark for a few more minutes to finish the EVP session, but found nothing. Joy and Rebecca were conducting an EVP session in the other room. If you're here, will you show us? No, nothing. Although we didn't find anything in the communications department, it was a far different story for the other team who were at the Japanese shrine and canon. It all started as Janella was reading the plaque near the shrine. On this land of which you are standing, thousands of lives were lost in the retaking and defending of Guam. Videographer Kent Pueblo started feeling cold. I'm hoping that's just the beach causing this chill right now. Yeah, I kind of feel it too. You feel it? Has, like yeah. little paper. Ugh. Like you, you guys are feeling this chill yeah. too, right? I'm, I'm yeah. actually getting yeah. goosebumps right now, so. This is, this, oh, I'm oh, hoping this is just hello. the freeze. Oh, Here we go. Oh. Yeah, so this is, I mean, this is out in the open. Um, there's no electrical sources around here. The K2 meter, which measures the electromagnetic field, began to spike. 
Paranormal investigators believe that this is due to the energy of a spiritual or paranormal presence. This is like really, really, really strong. I mean, this is like, this is like standing next to a Wi-Fi uh, router. I mean, I mean, this is what, it, that's strong. Okay, can you make this thing light all the way up, all the way up to the red dot, all the way up? Touch it with your hand. I'm gonna lift it over here a little bit. Touch it all and make it go all the way up. Touch it with your hand. Ooh, just got goosebumps. Give us a sign that you're here. Come on, a little bit more. A little higher. There you go, keep going. Then, just as paranormal investigator Steve O'Kelly was about to end the session, the meter spiked again. Ooh, there. It just went up all the way. I just saw it. Sure? All the way the, to the last light. That is crazy. I mean, there's nothing here. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. It. Nothing electrical. Did you catch that? Yeah. I, I, the only thing that's around here is this, this um, World, War II. World War II cannon. Let me go walk over there. Look at this, oh, guys. Wow. Look at this. This area. It, wow. wow. That is like standing next to... Like I said, a Wi-Fi, uh, Wi-Fi router. That is like amazing. I don't know what is causing this. Then, just like that, the meter stopped spiking until Steve began to ask questions again. Can you touch it and hold on to it with your hand? Make the light stay, stay lit. Okay, good, good, very good. Eventually, the spikes subsided near the cannon. Team 1 left the communications department and met up with Team 2 by the Japanese shrine to investigate further, and the K2 meter again began to light up. So this is a, a, a shrine that was built in honor of um, those who had died here, and in traditional Japanese culture, um, offerings are left for those who are um, in another realm of existence. And as you can see, it's spiking. So perhaps these, pre the presence is um, appreciative of the, the offerings. of the offerings left behind. From here, we moved on to the backside of the Adaloop compound, where we investigated a small cave. Even though it looked scary, we didn't get any real abnormal readings inside the cave. So we moved on to the rock wall near the cliff. Steve placed the meter by itself on the rock wall, and this is where things got really interesting. There, keep trying. There, keep doing oh. it. Come on. It. it was moving. Come on. Oh, oh my God. I see it moving. Come it's on. Moving. I know you can do it. The K2 meter was not only lighting up to the red, it was also shaking as if someone was touching it. Are you still here with us? Can you light up all the way? If you're still here with us. No. God. No, stay. Oh, wow. Oh, God. Oh, wow. Look at that, and it disappeared, went to zero. Oh, Look at God. that, it's gone. Wow. God. After this, we packed up and decided to head out, but while on our way out, Steve noticed that he had caught an EVP, or electronic voice phenomena, sort of near to the rock wall before we placed the K2 meter there. Are you male or female? We enhance the EVP further, and it sounds like a whisper that says help. Are you male or female? 